Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Welcome back to Grain Gab, a series where we focus on what to do in the markets, particularly for our grain producers throughout the United States. I'm Lori Nelson from Marshall, Missouri, and with me today is Kristen Steen from Atkins, Iowa. We're deep into harvest and many guys are finishing up one crop and starting another. Lots of questions are coming in about what to do with bushels that are delivered during the fall that weren't forward contracted. Kristen, what's your thoughts? Oh, my suggestions to many guys uh, has been in a big picture to look at grain marketing rules number three and six, Lori. So uh, always asking those three questions, right, when executing. Is the price profitable? Is it a strong price historically? What's your bias? Well, uh, let's start with profitability. Today we closed the December 22 futures at 678 and a quarter. November futures closed at 1372 and a half. Yeah, and in this past year when we sat down with producers, if you take a look over here, we've got the average cost of production sitting right around 431 a bushel on corn and 1103 on beans. Now, Obviously, we need to take a look at the specific producer's numbers as far as as actual cost of production, like those actual input costs that they had and what they're seeing for their yields in the field, right? Not what that APH is. Uh, but just given those numbers alone, I'd say we can start to check that one off, right? Off of the off of the December and November prices you gave us versus what we're seeing for cost of production. Check. Now, how about the second question? Is it a strong price historically? <laughs> yes, by and large, yes. Uh, on corn right now, we're sitting in the, above the 95th percentile for this time of the year and pretty darn close to that on being. So it's, the charts that you're looking at right now don't just show you know, over an average of so many years. They sit there and show seasonality wise, where are we sitting? So, uh, I mean, I start to check that box as well. Check the box. Now, number three, what's your bias? What's your bias, Kristen? Uh, so here's where that gets a little tricky. Personally, I'm a little mixed in my bias, which leads me to rule number six. Identify your risk and opportunities and have plans to manage both. Number yes. six. Exactly. So between your macroeconomics, right? The global demand is a huge risk at this point. The lack of water levels leading to the lack of exports during a vital part of the season, aka the river, right? China and their presence, what's going on with Taiwan still continues to be an issue as well as their COVID shutdowns. South American weather, Brazil's off to a good start. Argentina, not so much. The downside risk is becoming more apparent than what we've seen in the past few years. Boy, Kristen, so should I, should a farmer sell it? Well, when you look at continued tensions with Russia and Ukraine, increased costs and or lack of fertilizer supplies, I, I, everybody I talk to right now is still talking about depleted subsoil moistures, right? Extremely tight U.S. balance sheets, a dry Argentina, country as they're going into planting season, it's kind of hard to be that bold, right? To sit there and sell, yeah, sell it all. So, you know, what's your best strategy to, to help manage just the factors you mentioned? Yeah, on those bushels that, that are extra, it, it's simply put, right? Sell the bushels and buy a call. You can find a strategy that costs compare similarly to uh, commercial storage, but then your downside is limited. So for example, on corn, today you can price corn at 678, right? Plus or minus basis and go in and buy a March 23, $7 call and then sell a March 23, $8 call for about a 22 cent cost, right? So this gives you a dollar's worth of upside. It's fairly close to the money and protection out to the end of February, upside participation, right? The market would have to go through old highs to max that out. And if we do nothing but go down from here, all zero out is the 22 cents, rather than 
you're going to pay about the similar price for storage for that long of a period. And if the market just does nothing but completely fall out of bed, you're not only out the cost of storage, but you're also out whatever that market dropped off too. I really like that you've eliminated the downside risk on that. If you have any strategies for beans? Uh, pretty darn similar, right? The the theme is the same this time of the year. Sell those beans. We're sitting around that 1370, 1380 area plus or minus basis. And then if you step in and buy a March 1440 to 1540 call spread, so same type of structure, actually costs right around that 22 cents as well. It gives you the same type of upside, your limited downside protection to limit yourself against those, all those unknowns and those big risks that we've been talking about, um, but, but still leads way to being able to participate in the market volatility that, quite frankly, is here to stay for a while. Well, it sounds like it's a solid way to address both rules that we talked about today. I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up here on that note. If you have any questions or want to talk in further details, our contact information is listed below. Kristen, thanks for your help through this today. Thank you to Paige and Phil and their teams for making us look good. Tune in next time when we get back to the basics while planning for next year. Ooh, that could be a hot topic. In the meantime, have a safe harvest.